It's amazing how little you have to add to make it better than the other guy. So a lot of, I mean, we compete with a lot of freelancers, for example, who can't afford any of the technology, but even the smaller publishers, a um, bit of technology made all the difference. And our biggest selling weapon of all is trust. That's, what, that's really why people buy from us, because they've known us for a long time, and we always make sure that we keep the trust absolutely 100%. And that's one of your huge, huge selling points as a small business. Um, so we've covered the reality check, evaluating your idea, and the next one, which is a, a quick one, is preparation. Uh, now, why do I talk about polar exhibition? Apart from that, I love that picture. Uh, it's because if you are doing a startup, it's different. If you've got an existing business and you're doing a new product, this doesn't in the same way, but if you're doing a startup, once you launch your product or service, there is no turning back. You will be completely drowning in work for your customers, and you will wish that you had sorted out your accounting system. And a boring thing like a filing system, God, it makes life easy if you set it up in the first place, and so on. Um, so. When it comes to products, we do something, it's a trendy word, but it's Rapid Application Development, RAD. I'm really glad someone told me about this years ago, because it's, it's stuck in my head. And all it means is, if you have a product, get it out in front of the customer immediately, even if it's just a piece of paper saying, this is what I think it might be, and get feedback, and then come back, tweak it, get it out. And that's why all software has bugs in it. It just is, you just gotta get it out there, um, our websites will bug you when you put them up. Well, we spent a year trying to get the bugs out, but until you launch a website, you can wireframe it to death. You then see what really happens when you launch it, and of course, there are things you haven't thought of. There always are. So get it out there very quickly, and people will help you. And just asking for help is incredibly powerful. Everybody will help you. You'd be amazed. You know, assuming you're a nice person. They will just help you, not just family and friends, all sorts of people. But there's a lovely story with Randall Hines, who, who I, uh, I got to meet once. And he, you know, he, I don't know if you've seen more he's a bit chaotic, and he'd been trying to raise money, and he finally raised the money, but he hadn't had time to prepare his exhibition, expedition. But he raced off anyway to South Pole with Mike Stroud and got dropped off by the airplane and packed their sledge things and got in harness, and they wouldn't move. They were too heavy. So they had to take off a third of the supplies, a third of the food, a third of the fuel, and then do this the, the run to the South Pole in two thirds of the time, which meant kind of going from a walk to a jog. And of course, they almost died and that, they didn't really got very far at all. But it's one of those things, they just didn't have time to prepare it. Right. When I'm talking to a startup, I use a bunch of headings like that now. Whatever they are, it, it's really just going through the, the thought process. And I'm a big, big fan of getting help, going and getting help from someone who's done it before. Um, and there are some very good people out there. The business links get slagged off, but they've got some brilliant advisors in enterprise agencies. You know, some, are, some people are hopeless and some people are brilliant. And you just got to know that and, and find the good ones. Uh, but they can be tremendous. Help. And at the end of this, um, I'll, I'll give you a bunch of websites that you might want to look at. Because a lot of these good guys are giving away information on the web these days. So, to get your business past the survival, if you just read that. So, that was the third section. Can anyone remember what the fourth one was? Bit of a test. Yes. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> it is you. Um, because at the end of the day, if you look at who is successful and who is a bit successful and who's not successful at all, that's what it all comes down to. In venture capital, all we were ever doing was backing people. And funny enough, the really good people had really good fans and really good teams, and it all worked. And people believed in them, and they believed in themselves, etc. 
so it is down to you. And if you're, you know, if you're in Will Kings here today, King of Shades, I haven't met him, but I imagine he's a sort of big personality. He can do big things like take on Gillette. And if you're a small person, you can, you know, succeed in your your smaller place. Um, one thing I would say is that natural challenge for the ability and what we're talking about there is experience, skills, contacts. Now you don't necessarily have to have them all, but if you haven't got them, you need to bring them in somehow. I think there's a very important point here. Uh, a lot of people I meet you know, who have disappointments, it's always around people and people who didn't turn out to be what they thought they were. So there is a way around this. If you are getting a part, say you're getting an account someone to do your accounts and training, uh, then you can ask them how brilliant they are, and they'll say they're brilliant. Of course they will. And in an interview, they will tell you they are fantastic. But you just need to get one or two or three people who do what they do and pay them the money and get them to come along to the meeting or the interview or whatever and let them be the judge of this person. And we've just hired a digital marketing director at my company. My God, there are some real pretenders out there who were old-fashioned marketing people who had put on this sort of mantle of digital and said, oh yeah, Twitter this, LinkedIn that. They didn't know that, you know, what to model them going after them. But getting a good person in to come and test them, well, well it's frankly, it's embarrassing in some cases, and we can all do that. Um, <coughs> so, looking around, as I said at the beginning, who succeeds and who doesn't, it is around 100% believing. And I don't, you don't have to be that sort of person necessarily, but I think with whatever you're doing, what I've always found is there are some times when I look at what we're doing and I just think it just isn't good enough. It just, it's wishy-washy. If I, when I'm selling it, it just feels a bit nice to have, not must have. And it's very easy to say this, you know, go and get a compelling thing. But you do, you often need someone else to tell you, which is why it's so good having, we have a board. We, I, I, I had a board, when I had one employee, I had Andrew Bodie in as my chairman, and even though he was this, you know, big guy. Um, because we would sit down once a quarter, and Andrew would just say, well, I don't think that's right, mate. You know, having that outside person is absolutely fantastic. Um, and at times people have just said, you know, I wouldn't buy this. I might buy it to be nice to you, but I wouldn't, you know, really want to buy it. So we've gone away and come up with a, a better product or proposition or found a different market or whatever. Um, and I am making it sound very difficult, and I think it is. I think a lot of businesses are very difficult. I don't know about a bed and breakfast, but certainly my line of business is, that's why it's exciting. It is difficult, but it's <coughs> exciting and it's satisfying and you wake up in the morning ready to go, which I don't think you get, you know, necessarily work for big companies or whatever. Having said that, I'm hesitant to uh, <coughs> recommend to people that they go into small business. Uh, because I think from the outside it does look easy, it looks like you're all making money and you know, you go skiing, so you must be rich. Um, in reality, it's high stress, high risk, and low pay. Uh, I could have made so much more money if I'd stayed in those finance jobs, but I wouldn't. I mean, I couldn't stay. I'm much prefer this. So, um, I mean, I guess that's why we're all here. Uh, because it is, it is the most exciting thing to do, I think. So, that's my summary. Um, and the fact is, a lot of us are one-man bands, certainly to start with. We wear all the hats. And the most common thing we hate doing is sales. That's a real problem. If you're not going to do any selling, and you, you see this all the time, they just, people do everything but sell, because somehow they manage to find themselves busy all the time. And of course the business never takes off. Uh, and that is the one thing, it's very hard to get someone, you can get people to do your accounts, your web design, and all these things, but to get someone else to sell your product, uh, 